In this video, I'm going to show you how to change the default settings of your filters. If you've ever created a filter, then you know that these filters by default are made private. And this could be a good thing or it can be a bad thing, but above all else, if you've ever, ever created a filter, then you know how annoying it is to have a private filter and sometimes it can be a little bit embarrassing. So in this video, we're going to show you the different options that you have and most importantly, I'm going to give you the risks associated with this specific option that I'm going to give you and make a recommendation on. Hey everyone, I have a simple question for everyone. How do you ensure that your death tickets don't stall if someone is on leave? Resolution has a simple answer. Just install their out of office assistant and make sure that those tickets are automatically reassigned. It's super easy, but for some reason, many people don't know about this app. Make sure you click on the link in the description below for a 20% discount. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out the links in the description down below as I have officially launched my very first Udemy course and our Ape Tech merch store. So make sure you check out the links down below so you can help support the channel. Let's jump into Jira. So here we are inside of Jira and let's assume that we are going to be creating a filter where we just want to bring back everything that is in the status of accepted. So I just click on that box, I hit search, and now I have 703 items that are in the status of accepted. Well, if I wanted to save this, all I got to do is come over here, click my save as button, accepted issues, and hit submit. Now this is how you create a filter, so I'm not teaching you anything new or anything exciting, but what I do want you to focus on is over here in the detail section, when I go and click on this, you'll notice that this filter is visible only to you, and this filter is only editable to you. Now of course, you always have the option to, after you've created the filter, click on this edit permission, come over here under viewers, and change it to project, group, or user, or leave it private, and then that's pretty much your options. But today, I'm gonna show you as a system level administrator, the subtle difference that you can make in order to make these filters not be private. Now, I do want to caution you and warn you that before you go down this route, I want you to consider a couple of things. One, you should have really, really good project level permissions. And that means that you have changed the out of the box settings in Jura in such a way that not all the projects are visible to the entire user base of your Jira instance. That basically translates to projects are locked up. You need to be given access to a project in order to see the issues in that project. So that's caveat number one. And caveat number two, even though this is public, or at least what I'm about to show you says public, it's not public like to the whole internet. It's gonna be public to anyone that's logged in. That assumes then that you have given that individual a license. Now, if you aren't careful, and you haven't checked your settings, it is very much possible that anybody on the internet could potentially get to your Jira, but you have to lock that down. And so if you're watching this video and you're concerned about that, then this video, the stuff that I'm gonna show you, the technique I'm gonna show you in this video, it should not be the top of your worries because you have a much bigger problem if anybody on the internet can access your Jira. So go and take care of that problem first and then worry about what I'm about to show you. Anyways, those are the two caveats. I just wanted to let you know that we are going to be making these filters public. And by public, it means that they're going to be accessible by any logged in user, but it's going to be okay. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. So let's jump back into Jira and let me show you how to actually make these filters public by default. Are you assigning issues to people on PTO? Without a vacation calendar inside of Jira, your tickets can stall out for weeks don't let your Agile delivery stall because somebody's on PTO. Resolution has the perfect solution for Agile teams of all sizes with their out of office assistant app for Jira. Fix your current workflows by appointing backup owners and ensure throughput doesn't stall when team members are away on vacation or holiday. Check out the out of office assistant in the Atlassian marketplace and get a 20% discount with the code in the description below. So making the filter public by default is actually gonna be quite easy. All you gotta do is click on the gear and click on system. Now again, it assumes that you're a system level admin, like a site admin. Now, you would be tempted to come down to filters to do this, but that's not the right place to do this. You're actually gonna come to 
default user preferences. Now, why it's here, I don't know. I thought this was really, really interesting. I, I would have never found it this way. So I'm really, really glad that I accidentally stumbled on this. And now I get to show it to you. Once you're in your user default settings, you're gonna notice that there's a section here called default sharing for filters and dashboards. And out of the box, it's set to private. So all you're gonna have to do is click on edit values. From here, select this default access section and call it public and then click update. Now this is going to impact every user. It's not just for a specific set of users or for a specific project. This is a global setting that's gonna impact every user. So again, make sure you take that into consideration when you make this change. This change is not gonna be for everybody, so don't come hate me in the comments. This is only if you really want to do this. I'm washing my hands here from any liabilities. Don't come after me either. I'm just telling you, giving you information, because out of the box, honestly, this is not this big of a deal because out of the box, all the projects are public anyways. And so I'm actually encouraging you to lock up your projects and put some permissions so that not everything's exposed because out of the box, your Jira is exposed to begin with. So this is not a problem if you are practicing good like cybersecurity practices of locking down your Jira and locking down your projects. All right, so once this is set to public, then your users are simply gonna be able to go back to creating a filter. And let's assume that this time we wanna create an issue where we're gonna see everything that's a type Apple. I love Apple. Hopefully new iPhones are gonna be cool, but I know they're gonna let me down anyways. I actually don't have any Apple issues, so that's a letdown. Let's just bring all the stories. So we're gonna hit search here. We're gonna bring back 344 stories. Now I'm just gonna save this as stories. And when I do that and I click submit, now I'm gonna show you something really, really interesting. Under details, now it says any logged in user. And this is really, really good for a couple of reasons. The primary thing is one, now your team doesn't have to suffer through these embarrassing moments where they create this awesome filter, they share it with executives or a very, very important stakeholders only to find out that they can't access the filter. So then they have to go in, edit the permissions, make it public or open it up to the project. And that's just, again, an embarrassment waiting to happen. So this is going to save you grace from that specific scenario. But the second scenario that this is gonna help out in, and possibly my most critical scenario, is when you are dealing with the board filter and maybe the owner or the uh, administrator of that board leaves the company or they change teams, they're just not accessible, maybe they're on vacation, right? But only the author of that original filter is able to make changes to these board filters. So what is often the case is somebody else, somebody new, will come in, create a new filter, apply it to that board, and then that board instantly now becomes inaccessible to everybody in that team. And this is a big problem because essentially what has happened is they created a new filter for that board, which again, defaults to private, and now that whole board is now private to only the person that made that new filter. So by going down this route, you're gonna save yourself from that embarrassment uh, because now your filters, when you apply them to the board, are gonna be open back up to the public or to any logged in user, which is gonna be fine because as long as your project is locked down to specific individuals, then nobody else is gonna be able to see the board or the filter or the issues inside because the project level permissions are gonna dictate and and basically control the access to the issues. What this also means is that even though I have now made my filter public or any logged in user can see it, they're gonna be able to search for it. They're gonna be able to see it from the dropdown of all the filters. But when they go into the filter, they're gonna be really, really sad because unless they have access to the project itself, the issues that are inside of that filter are gonna be hidden unless you have the bright, proper project level access. So as you can see, this is not that big of a deal. And even if it is because let's just say that you don't have project level access, that means you're taking the defaults of Jira, which is basically it's open to the public or any logged in user anyways. So this all becomes a moot point. If you've ever assigned debt issues to someone who is on vacation, remember that the out of office assistant for Jira is there for you and it is incredibly easy to set up and use. It has integrations with Slack and Tempo and you can connect to Outlook or Google Calendar using Zapier. So you don't even have to maintain any dates, super easy to use. Try it out today and get 20% off by using the promo code in the description down below. I bet it won't disappoint you. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash the subscribe button, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and don't forget to check out all the different links in the description down below. 
These are going to be the different ways that you can help support the channel. I specifically have just launched my very first Udemy course. So if you're brand new to Jira, you're going to want to go take that course. Check it out. They put them on sale every once in a while. I'll let you know via my social media. And also check out the merch store so you can get these really cool iHeart Jira shirts and everything else that I have available. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need